Hi, Watson Gan here. Welcome back to my 21 day challenge. Today is day 10th on sharing my 20 year experience in real estate and how I can help you expedite your career. And also, I use this 21 day of COVID lockdown, record a clip each day, go for about half an hour where I share some of the things, some of the most practical things you can use on your business to bring in the maximum return. Also, I put a plan, a five-year plan of selling real estate, becoming a millionaire within the five-year time frame. I have poured out my heart and really spilled my guts, open everything I know that can best benefit you. I hope you take advantage of it. Now, the last four days I've been talking about acres of diamond based on a story was told to Dr. Cornwell Dr. Russell Cornwell about 150 years ago how he made it to be a book so multi-million copy and able to make so much money from that to build our present day Temple University I talk about what the acres of diamond how we especially you ladies love diamonds Diamonds means the most precious stone on earth. And there are diamonds all over where we are. Our country is filled with diamonds. Our culture. Also, I talk about our resources, free resources available to us. And also our education. Those are great, great source of treasure that we have in America. On the day 10, I talk about how we have free access to great treasure, free access to, 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 to different property, and also the contact we come, people we come in contact with, those are great view of value. And also the relationship we make, whether it be in a family situation or in an organization, or in a school setting, or in some other public clubs or places we hang out. And also I talk about our ex-client, our former client, could be a great deal of uh, free resources available to me, uh, to us. Now today, I'm gonna talk about something that you're gonna love. Every minute I share with you, it's gonna mean some value to you. And I'm gonna provide you some proper script where you can use to convert those things to become diamond. They are kind of like the diamond in the rough. When you pick up a piece of diamond, you don't see a diamond shiny. It actually usually cover under a piece of rock. Some can be so big and so thick and so rugged. Usually the way the f diamond is being formed, those rocks are hard, they are tough to crack. Some of them are very pointy, very sharp. It's hard to even handle them. Many times that's our treasure in our business is like. We have some of the best clients, some of the best prospects we can convert into multi-million dollar sales. We can convert to a good income, good salary, or good, really good sales for us. But in order to do that, you gotta crack those things. You gotta crack those rocks, so to speak. Now, we as a real estate agent, as a realtor and broker, we are so in tune to looking for something that is the next best thing. There's so many things online and in the association of realtors in the convention that we go to and uh, people targeting us as realtor and business professionals selling us one program another crm another one could be another way of advertising on social media another one could be a proper script and then all could be a good coach that is like superstar coach make you a millionaire overnight some will promise you, like, you know, if you would just sign up to my program, it costs $9.99, or I'm sorry, $99.99 for the first month, for the first three months. <laughs> then later on, they try to ask for more. Try to promise you they are the best. You know, those are, those are, there's a lot of good programs out there I know for us. I have benefited from great coaching. I benefit from great, great um, teacher, top mind in our industry, and I really, been blessed, help me to get my business, propel my business to the next level and then to the next level and then to the next level. But each of these things you sign up for usually costs a lot of money. Plus, you also take a lot of time 
required you to implement, to study that, to put the time some side, some time to really focus on it. So whether it be the silver bullet you're looking for, or the shiny object that you're pursuing, or something the latest technology, the latest uh, uh, the gadget, or the latest whatever you know that can make transform your business. Those are all well, but today I'm going to share something with you totally free. First of all, what I'm giving here is free. You don't have to pay anything to attend this class online. And you also don't have to be a membership of something. You don't have to pay for a conference ticket to listen to a half an hour or maybe a 45 minute an hour speech, you know. Or sometimes you uh, have to uh, just uh, just require to buy material from a, a coaching program and you know, you, you, some, you use some of it, a lot of them are just sitting on the wayside. So that's not what I'm all about. I'm all about giving a free thing, giving time tested, having proven technique to help you grow your business. And my aim and my goal is make sure that you will become a better professional. You can do a lot better job in serving your client, help to bring our industry a notch higher. And if you were to go by what I'm teaching you this 21 day, you have a very, very good chance of achieving the goal which I aim for you which is to make a million dollar in the next five years. At the end of five years, you'll be a millionaire. You can walk away from this business if you decided to retire or do something else. Or you can decide to do business in a much slower pace. Or you might decide to sell your business and walk away with the kind of money that you put in this last five years. You say, wow, five years, that sounds like a short time. Yes, it is a short time. And, but at the same time, it's also very doable, very, very doable. And if you go through my 21 day, I'll prove to you this can be done. Now today I'm focusing on the free diamond that is in our business. When I say that, I'm talking about in terms of people, people in our, people in our business right now that we have worked with, people we come in contact with, people you already spend money acquire. I'm not asking you to spend another dollar to pay for some kind of internet lead. I'm not asking you to spend another 55 cents to put in a stamp somewhere to mail something to somebody. No, you don't even have to do that. All you're going to do is just have a phone or just have to be able to, to have some really good script in, with you. And these are the script or these are the things I want to impart to you. I want to share with you that you can start to do it. As soon as this thing is over, you can just pick up your phone and call somebody. And you can say a few things that can easily bring in business for you the next day maybe even right away i'm not surprised some of you after you make the phone call this person might say yeah i'd like to see the house take me out tomorrow make appointment or those of you listing agent they might say okay can you give me the value of my home the address is abc elm street i wouldn't be surprised one or two two or three or four or five start rolling in like that so i've been using the word acre break into four part a c r e Every episode I teach, I try to just limit to four topics, four of the most important, four of the most critical, most crucial thing you can pick up. If I give you a list of 10, most likely you forget six of them or more. If I cut down to four, there's a very good chance you remember the four distinctive thing, the four most important, or the four keys, or the four ways, or the four methods, or the four things you must do. Now the four thing on acre, three diamond for you of, of people are this. For A stands for active. C stand for close. R stand for repeat. And E stand for expire. Now if you've been this is enough time, you know all these are terminology coming from the MLS, just about except the repeat. MLS, the status of your client. That's right. I'm going to focus on this four group of people that you do business with on a day-to-day -day basis and how you can utilize them. You can take advantage. You can do, go an extra mile to meet their need. Do a little something else that can make you more business. You can have twice as much business or at least have a good chance of getting 50% more from what you already have. See, see what I'm saying? Let's say you're working with four clients. By doing what you are doing, put 25% of your time, focus on a certain thing to tell them, a certain way to serve them, or a certain way to meet their need. 
you are able to have four more clients or if it's not four at least two more okay so if you're working with four people you get four more you get eight clients if you or some of them you're working for four clients out of the four two of them will bring you one more client and then the other two will bring another one that's six this is a way to add on more people more client more prospect without spending any money now I come back to the first one called active active is anybody you work with which is uh, actively looking for a home if you're a buyer agent or a listing that you have which is uh, on the market which is uh, when I say active I mean it's, it's either you sign a contract or about to sign the contract all the way before escrow close before the transaction is done technically you're representing this client these are the people active they rely on you they require lots of attention they are with you spend more time than any other group of prospect or people they are in your business this is what I meant by active let's just say if you have a working with a buyer you know when you work with buyer I don't know where your market is but for us in Southern California buyer tends to be outnumbered in a great deal compared to the listing so we always be on the seller's market when a property go on the market usually a seller can easily get multiple offer two three four is very common sometimes they have five ten even that is not uncommon we have cases where people have 20 offer 50 offer I am a specialized in doing listing and uh, just on my first weekend I can easily get 10 offer 20 offer and when you work with a buyer sometimes it's very can be very frustrating you never know if your buyer will stick with you after they put two or three offers they did not get it they jump in, they might go straight to the listing agent or sometimes they get enticed by agent who are online or sometimes they might go back to an old friend or someone who refer it can so buy, buyer they say buyer a liar I don't think buyer a liar any more than seller are a liar it's just the buyer don't have that kind of loyalty the buyer get frustrated they tend to look for an easier way to get the home they want or find a way they can get some money refund back to them thinking they're getting a good deal or some buyer were just thinking about hey maybe I should try something new so when you have offer accepted even before offer accepted when the buyer and you are in the good the best term you try to do something to let them know that you do the best job you could and while they're happy let's say on the day of the offer accepted I would always ask my buyer this question well congratulations John and Susie I'm so happy you got this home you know what you are one of the 25 offer you take a chosen and I did everything possible 21 out of 25 that means you have a chance of less than 5% less than 5% and I was I worked so hard to make sure that you get this home and you know I really enjoy working with you just based on the way you too the, the way you save up your money the way you work through at your first home and now now that we are able to achieve this milestone for you who do you think would be the next most likely person or couple like yourself who would love to, to take this opportunity use my service to buy their next home or to buy their new home see when a buyer looking for a home they usually chit chat with somebody and they know or they might have somebody at work or maybe in the same company or from old group a group that belongs to or church they will know oh yeah by the way I know Mary is still looking for a home I think what you do for me she'll be so happy to hear that and she probably can use your help that's how you double your business that way on listing same thing too when you do listing let's say um, you put on the market and they get offer accepted when you present the offer and I, if you're like me I try my very best to give more than what the seller expect the expect offer I do a little more I will bring them like moving boxes so that they know that I'm not just providing service I provide something tangible not just a boxer I save them a trip to the hardware store or to uh, wherever they buy their packaging materials and that is just a big blessing I'll just say I know how stressful things are this is the thing for you to use if you need any more let me know you know I'll arrange for more for you and also when they accept the offer right you want to make sure that you ask the same question like what about the buyer accept the phrase a little differently you will say something like that you know what John and Susie helping you sell this home is one of my most enjoyable experience uh, enjoyable tasks in selling and doing real estate 
And you, all, you two happen to be one of my favorite clients just because of the way you take care of your home. I just so appreciate you. And the way you listen to my advice, you took my advice and run with it. Now, who would be the next most likely friend or couple that you know who would be in the same position like yourself, who are looking to sell, that I am able to help them out? Now, when you ask that question, they are like somebody, you know how you, when, when you buy a new car, right? Let's say you buy a nice Mercedes. Everything you see on the street is a Mercedes, right? Before you, before you might be driving a Jaguar, you didn't, they, no, those Mercedes would not be notified. You wouldn't even notice them. But once you start driving a Mercedes, you start to see the similar car that you have. Same thing with people selling home. When they're selling home, somehow they're attracted to each other, maybe in a conversation, maybe on their social media chatting, or maybe in a social event, social function, they're kind of in tune to that. So they kind of have to know so-and-so. And then, you know, if that's the case, they're able to bring you business, they can refer to you. They say, oh yeah, I think my neighbor, three doors down, was thinking about selling a couple months ago, and we talk about that. We bump with each other, walking in the evening, and um, you, you can give them a call. This is the time when you ask them for their phone number, or maybe make a point to contact them. Now I got a lot of script on things like that I can share with you. Obviously, in this short recording, I'm not able to cover it all. So this squad that called active without costing you too much money, just based on the people you're working with. The timing is very important. And you also need to do something called that managing expectation. When they are at the most happiest point, you do that. Most real estate agents make a mistake of saying, if I do not get the home sold, if I did not help them into their new home, it's not the right time to do that. Believe me, that is not exactly the best time to ask for that kind of refer reference or recommendation. You need to ask at the proper time. For buyer, there are some a few key points where you can jump on them to ask for that kind of referral. For seller, there are a few other key ones. And I'll, I'll go to that another in another time. Now, the, so the active would be a good source of bringing business to you. Now, the close are the people whom you've done business with who successfully bought a home or sold their home. And the contract is over. You're no longer and have any obligation for them. Now, I know, I know, I heard this before in conferences, in Association of Realtors magazine report I hear, about 75% of realtors have no contact whatsoever with their past client. They might sign a Christmas card, maybe once in a while, a little newsletter here, popping here and there, but majority, we're talking about 75%, do not have any contact with our past client. And for good reason too, because for, first of all, when the, the thing sales over, there's not much you can do. They are not gonna do any more business for some of them five, some of them 10, some even longer. Even if they do, there's no guarantee they'll go back to you, right? I was told that about 80% of the people do not go back to their old agent, they'll go for somebody else. Of course, with the way things are, with a new setting, with internet, with a new agent coming in, a new company, new attention being, taken and new internet leads and stuff like that. It's even more difficult. We as a realtor can easily just kind of put them aside. We thought someday we'll get to them, but before you know, a year go by, maybe five years have gone by, 10 years gone by. Now the closing, this is some of the best time to get in touch with your close client, your past client, people done business with. On one my, on my episode, I believe it was number four, day number four, I talked, I, I, I shared a script with you. It's called, I call it COVID-19 script. I have wrote something and I use my hand, person handwritten their address, send it to them to tell them that I care about them. Now, if you have a client you did business with a year ago, maybe five years ago, some of you maybe 15 years ago, you have very little personal contact. You call them, they don't pick up the call. You don't really want to knock on the door, you don't have time to do that. And you might send a Christmas card, there's no response. And when they get your business card, they think, oh yeah, this is an obligation. Insurance agent send me a card. Of course, my realtor send me a card. Of course, my mom would be the next person to send me a card. But this is a COVID time where you can take this opportunity to pick up the phone call. Just give them a call. Say, hey, John. Hey, Susie. This is Watson. I'm just thinking of you because of COVID. I know that a lot of people are affected by the economy. How are you guys doing? How's your family? If they have older parents, how are your parents doing? Especially if you know their parent, there'll be a good thing to add to it. They're really touching people's heart. And when you're done, don't try to ask for business right away. Just say, I want to let you know I'm here for you. I'm more than just selling real estate. I'm more than just listing your home. I'm more than just to take you around, look at new listing. I'm here to help you any way you can. 
any way I can to make your life better, serve your family in any way. Does your daughter need any kind of, a, you know, that, that kind of thing. Just, just you know your client situation, what kind of, if they happen to be a small business owner, you would say something like, oh, are you okay with the business? And do you need to look at getting a loan? Or if they have a mortgage, do they restructure your loan? That's a very good conversation. Now, this client might hang up the phone, you may not get a sale. But trust me, trust me. The chances of them coming back to you the next time they do real estate has to increase by at least 50%. Meaning if you do two of those, you've got one more client. That's pretty really darn good, right? Plus, there's a good chance you refer something, somebody to you. Now, if you just you just got to ask them properly. Now, AC, active close. And that R, I meant to, ref, I refer to as repeat. Something that you do more than once. When I say repeat, I mean somebody who do business again with you who bought a home from you and then buy a second home. That's what I meant to repeat. And I also include with this R stand for refer. Somebody like you so much because that person, you get to repeat another business. Repeat and refer basically for the purpose of this, this uh, episode. Refer to people you give you more than one business in a row. That means people trust you enough, who like you enough to give you their business again or refer someone who they know, who they like, who they trust for you to do the business again. That's what I meant by referral. Now, repeat business and referral business, these are people who are really, they could have gone anywhere else. They could have choose. I know one thing about my, my business, a good bulk of my business come from refer and repeat. These are people who trust you. You just spend the time to build the trust. You, the trust is already there. You just gotta pick up where you left off and continue on. And when some of my most favorite thing is go to a client who's referred to me. You can just walk in there, so-and-so told me about you, Watson. You don't tell me all that. I know you're good. You just could tell me where to sign or how much I should release a home for. Just let me know what I can do with my house. Oh my gosh, so-and-so told me that you are so great and you are like this. I, I trust him and I trust you. So that is, those are some of the best people. Now when somebody do that to you, refer somebody to you or repeat a business with you, be sure that you have a proper system in place. Write a personal card to thank them for it. And sometimes you might even come up with some idea. Each time somebody refer a business to you, you would say you would make a donation. Donation can be a big donation. Could be a thousand dollar, could be ten thousand dollar. If you have like Bill Gates, your donation is more like ten million dollar. But that doesn't be big. Just give a donation in the name of a charity of their choice. You know, it's like you can sell a home say if you do that, I will give a donation to the PTA or to the school where you are teaching at. I mean, I'm talking about those teachers. They love things like that. Or make a donation to the classroom for their supply. Or it could be a donation to a humane society if they're a pets lover. Or it could be a donation to the church if they go to the common same church. Or if you know a certain church he goes to who do a lot of good work like for the homeless or for providing for pregnant crisis pregnancy center. Some churches do things like food kitchen. Those are all great ideas. When people refer, they don't nest, we cannot really write a check to bless them. You can give up a $20 gift card, which is always a great idea. But what, what $20, $25 mean, right? By giving a donation, let's just say a donation of $100 to a charity, you don't have to tell them the amount, it's just in your name. They make them feel like so honored, so special. You are connecting in an even more level, in a special level. That's what I like to encourage most of us to do. And also I will have a, in my business, I have a thing that I do, a different charity that I work. In the past five years, I have been helping because of problem with homelessness people experiencing homeless in Los Angeles, in Southern California. We told people, each home that I list and sell will give money to help to get a homeless person or homeless family off the street. We work with a group called Hope for Homeless Youth, where they provide counseling. They even arrange for their shelter. They have job training, counseling. They even help those kids, those young girls who a young boy for that matter, caught into the prostitution, human trafficking, get them out of the lifestyle of the the cruel lifestyle. And that's what I do for my clients. Say, hey, if I list and sell your home, we will give a donation to help this one homeless family in your name. And that a lot of people really appreciate like that. That shows that you care more than just your pocketbook. You care about the community. You care what's important for other people and for the people that you, you come in contact with. So those are repeat and referral business. Now the expire is the last thing. C A C R E E stands for expire. Now when I say expire, I mean those people you 
for you listing agent, you have listed property. For one reason or another, they decided to not sell. Maybe the price was too high. That's usually the case. But for me, I pride my home reasonably. My client tends to listen to me because of my track record. I have no problem telling the majority, almost all my clients to price it at a reasonable price so home can sell faster. This should be our goal. Now, the, but sometimes you do have people who are who expire because or they ask to be withdraw or cancel. This in our analysis it's called withdraw, meaning no longer offer for showing. Cancel means they cancel the contract with you. They're free to sell to, with somebody else because they're free to sell on their own. Whatever, those are all referred to ex expire. Those are no longer an uh, active contract for active contract to sell. How do you deal with people like that? Well, first of all, you can understand what are the reasons those listings went expire. Sometimes it could be husband and wife. The wife really, really love the home, but husband wants to sell to get a bigger house or closer to his mother or maybe just going to be closer at work. But the wife just got attached to it. And somehow through the process, the grinding of listing the home, cleaning up, showing, decided eh, maybe it's not the best time. The market isn't that great after all. Can we wait until next year? And then decided to put a hole on it and told you that maybe we'll look into selling next year. Before you let two, three, four, five, ten years go by, they're still in the house. These are the expire I'm talking about. Another group of expire is even more common is that you could do the best job you could. You could provide the best service. For some reason, these people selling at home, they got stressed out. Maybe they... So how do you do with these people who expire, who are no longer a client? at one time you were in contract with. Now, easy. All you're going to do is just look at the reason why. For example, if somebody who has tried to sell the home they could not sell, they're overpriced, you would go something like that. You know what, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, it breaks my heart that five years ago I tried to sell your home. I really poured out my heart. I did everything I know how to get you the most money. The home did not sell. I felt like a failure and I am so sorry I put you through all that. However, looking back, wow, maybe it's not that bad of an idea. Your home just gone up by 20%. So now you're 20% richer. Aren't you glad you didn't sell? Well, this is a good time for you if you're thinking about moving anytime soon that you and I can get together and we'll see what's the value you can get for your home and how we can help you to achieve that goal one more time. So these are the things that you can say to them. And for those who had um, husband and wife disagreement, you, you, if you take good notes, you will remember who say what or who say that. Then you just address that and go back to them. Those could instantly pick up where you left off instead of having some agent or somebody from online or some postcard just sent to them, they call them up and lost the listing. You can just pick up and salvage what you have. Most likely, the job will be a lot easier. Now, if you have a, any kind of conflict situation with your client, if you have a, 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 a thing that unpleasant thing that never got resolved, it's always, always a good idea to go back to that resolve those issues. Just go back to them. Hey, you know what? Will we sell your home for you? Thing was so stressful, I pour out my heart. I, mean, I know that week I worked over 80 hours just to handle the manage the sale, and we have gone through some uh, difficulty with, uh, you know, I don't know, the city come after us because the certain part wasn't permitted, and thing got, you know, got stressed out, and I probably said a few things that I shouldn't have said, and I'm so sorry. And now that I'm learning what are the things that have to do to do, do your home, I've gone through those uh, steps already. If you should sell again, Trust me, I'm the better person to handle that because the new person involved may, may or may not know what to do and may commit the same mistake. You can waste another two months and you could be wasting another many, many weekends and miss out on the opportunity. So things like that, just be ready to say sorry if you did something wrong. Be willing to just humble yourself. Be willing to just uh, just uh, look at the big picture and just, uh, you know, your business, your life is much bigger than yourself. Your reputation really your income. You need to make this money to be able to live a life, be able to provide for your family, be able to reach your, if you stick with me for 21 days, be able to reach your $1 million goal. Those are so, so much more important. So these are the five people, these are the four people in the area of acres of diamond. You can get a business you can get without spending any money, practically nothing. I hope this is helpful. So please like, this episode, please comment, please share, share with as many people you like, as people, as many people in this business as possible. I want to be able to bring our business up a notch higher, make our industry in a better place, make people be able to make, make more money, work less, put out less investment, wasting less time into our life, in our business.
Okay, and uh, I would love to be able to give you more detail. If, if you have any questions about any of these things here, please feel free to message me or please let me know. I'll do my best to help you one on one. And it might take a while for me to get to you because of the, the demand of my own uh, people here and plus the demand of, of the different people I work with. But I'll do my best to meet your need as I, as I go. Okay, thanks again. And uh, would stick with me for tomorrow, which is a um, halfway point of our 21 day, I promise to have something very, very, very different. It will be a change of direction. It is something that you would enjoy. It's called Rich Life, R-I-C-H, Rich Life, how you live a rich life, how you become rich in this business. See you tomorrow.